Today at the start of class, we looked at some of our previous knowledge from the unit and took some of those learning goals and tried to combine them into larger problems. Now while the two questions we looked at today don't offer a lot of context, I think it's important for us to look at these types of problems because it is typical for you to see questions like this that uh, focus on problem solving um, and don't give you much of a visual. So uh, we will do a little bit of practicing here, but I will also try to offer some context in the coming days. So first of all, looking at the question, we're looking for an equation of a line that's perpendicular to the line given, and then also has the same y-intercept as a second line, this guy right here. So I think it's important that we visualize what this actually means. While it's not a requirement, it's probably a good idea to sketch yourself a visual of what this might look like. Your first equation is in standard form, so it doesn't offer us a whole lot in terms of information uh, regarding this particular problem. But assuming this is our line here, we do know that we are looking for a perpendicular line to that. So something like this, or like this, or like this. However, we do know that it will have the same y-intercept as this particular line here. And we know that because this is in y equals mx plus b form, or slope y-intercept form, that it should have the same y-intercept as that particular line, which is right here. So we can assume that our line is going to look something like this, assuming that this red line is, um, is the first line that we're showing. So let's look at this a little bit further. On a new page here, we're going to focus on the first equation and try to figure out what the slope of that line is. Since we're looking for a line perpendicular to this particular line in standard form, we do need to know the slope so we can find the negative reciprocal. So we'll go ahead here and we'll take the standard form and we'll now put it into slope y-intercept form by isolating the y variable in the equation. Since we're trying to isolate the y term, I'm going to bring that term to the other side, since that will be the quickest way to do it, although not the only way. That leaves us with 2x plus 6 on the left side, noting that these two terms cancel out, leaving us with 0, and we're left with a 3y on the right side. In order to isolate y, we're going to divide 3 using opposite operations, which means we're going to divide the entire left side by 3. However, note that you can also write it as dividing each individual term by 3. Following through, we'll see that we're left with 2 over 3 times x plus 2 is equal to 1y. That tells us that we now have a slope of our original line, which is 2 over 3. As we learned earlier in the unit, perpendicular lines have the opposite sign, since one will be increasing, one will be decreasing, and the rise and the run will flip, which is the reciprocal. And we now know our slope is negative 3 over 2, so our line is y equals negative 3 over 2x, and we now need to focus on what is our y-intercept of this line. However, if we go back to the original question, we know that the new line should have the same y-intercept as y equals 3x plus 6. So by looking at this, we can see that it isn't in slope y-intercept form, and therefore we know our y-intercept should be positive 6. And therefore we have our new line, y equals negative 3 over 2x plus 6. Going back to the graph to see how this compares to our prediction at the beginning, we have our original line in slope y-intercept form, so that's a line equivalent to this line here, we can now plot the y-intercept 
and then use the slope to find more points. Since our y-intercept is 2, we'll begin at 2 on the y-axis. We can then use our slope, which is a rise of 2 and a run of 3, to go up 2 and over 3, up 2 and over 3, up 2 and over 3, and we can do the same thing going backwards by going left 3, down 2, left 3, down 2, and we have our first line. Using the same logic with our new line, we'll then graph our y-intercept and use our slope as, as well. Here's our y-intercept of y equals 6. And using our rise of negative 3, that's like falling 3 and running 2, we get a first point, falling 3, running 2, we get a second point, and we can continue following that same pattern until we have a few points to work with to graph our, our new line. And by checking this graph, we can see visually that it appears to be perpendicular. It does start with a y-intercept of y equals 6, and we feel fairly confident, or very confident, that we have found our new line, and thus the new equation must be correct.